Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to share a rules overview and review of Mystic Market. It's ages 10 and up, two to four players, and it takes 20 to 30 minutes depending on if you're playing by the speedy rules or not. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to get the most coins by the time this pile of cards runs out. Or if you're playing the short version, you just play to whoever has 30 coins first. Uh, for game setup, we have a two player game here and you pick someone to be the dealer. They shuffle the ingredient and potion decks and they give each player four ingredient cards face down. Each player gets five coins and then they deal out uh, five ingredient cards face up. They deal out five uh, potion cards face up and then this is the correct order to have all of the uh, the value track for the um, vials at the beginning of the game. You also take three of the six supply shift cards at random. You wouldn't look at these first and then you would shuffle them into the deck at random. So you wouldn't know where they were in here. Each player is also handed a reference card, which is very key for getting up and running quickly in the game. It's basically all the information you have to know very succinctly put down. On your turn, you just have your choice of one of the three main actions, which is to buy, swap, or sell. But then potions you're allowed to purchase at any point during your turn, regardless of what action you're choosing to do, and then you can play them either during your turn or during someone else's turn. And I'll show you what that looks like. We'll say this person uh, dealt, so this person gets to go first. Nobody would see their cards in their hand, but I'm going to lay them out. Uh, they have two orange, a blue, and a red. And if you look at the cards, there are different amounts that you need to complete in order to have a full set, which you can then sell for the value of wherever it is on uh, this chart right here. So they have these cards. Typically on your turn, you're going to buy first and you're allowed to buy one card from out here and one from the pile. So we'll go ahead and have them start from the pile and they buy a card and it's a mystery card. They don't know what they're going to get. They got an orange and then they have three coins left and we'll go ahead and have them pay uh, three to get one of the blue cards out here. You play whatever the value is, the number of dots at the bottom of where that vial is along here is what the market value is for it right now. So they need to pay three coins to get one blue, it is immediately refilled and they can still choose to do things on their turn if they want to buy a potion. So they're going to go ahead and do that. They're going to pay two of these. We'll discard it up here and they get this potion. It gets refilled. They could buy another potion if they were able to or wanted to. You're not required to buy a potion if you have uh, the cards for it, but generally they're pretty useful and you would like to. Now, even though uh, they have bought this, they don't have to use it right away, but there's a number on here that it's a profit and that applies only once they've used it. So this, they get a profit of two when they draw one card from the top of the ingredients deck. And you know what? They're going to go ahead and do that. So this card, I'm just going to um, discard it off to the side here when they've used it. They get two coins and they're going to draw an additional card from the top of the ingredient deck and they're not going to do anything else. So that would end their turn. This player's turn is over. We're going to go ahead and make their hand be a mystery again. It's this player's turn. Uh, even though typically you would buy at this time, I'm going to show what it, it means to do a swap action. So you can choose for free, and sometimes if there's very expensive cards out here, maybe it's strategic to do so, to trade one or two cards from your hand from what is out here. So they can choose the yellow for a blue, and they could choose to trade the red for an orange, or they could just stop if they wanted to do that. Um, it's one or two, market only, not from the deck, 
no money is exchanged. You can still buy from the uh, uh, potions deck uh, if you want, but if you don't, that's it. Turn is over. And now I'll show what selling looks like. We'll go back to this player's hand. Uh, you can choose to wait. You could wait and sit on these blue cards. Your limit of cards in your hand is eight, so that's something to take into account. But uh, you can sell multiple sets. If they'd had four blues, they could wait and sell them each as a set of two. Uh, and uh, you can choose if they had um, a purple it might be valuable. So we'll say if they had a purple instead of the orange. Uh, you can sell a single card and that can be strategic to do so because you can adjust the market values. So if they just were to sell uh, these two as a set, you get the number that's underneath the vial of that color. So they sold two, it would be worth 12 and they would get 12. You can still buy potions and do things like that even while you're selling if you wanted to. Um, so take that into account. Or if instead, if they had this purple and they wanted to use it, you can sell a single card. You do not get anything for it, but you adjust the market when you do that. And you get to move whatever color you sold up to the five spot and the market adjusts accordingly. So then if they do that, they sell that, they don't get anything for the purple, but then they sell the two blues. The blues are now in the 15 spot and they would get 15 coins instead. Final couple of points about the game. If you draw a supply shift card from the ingredient deck, you instantly move whichever vial is pictured to there down to the 15 spot. And you do so, it's actually really fun to do so, by shifting all the other ones up until that one's down there. And then instantly that changes the value. Now to buy any of the reds costs three, purple costs three, um, blue and green are two, and then yellow and orange are only one to purchase from this row. And the values for selling sets have adjusted accordingly. Uh, if you were the person that drew this card, uh, that is not it for your turn. You then get to draw a replacement card and have um, a different ingredient in your hand. And then the other thing is once the potions deck runs out and you've used all the potions, it's gone. You do not shuffle it up and put it back out there for continued use. You just don't have any more potions in play for the rest of the game. So that's how to play Mystic Market. The target demographic for this game is it is a family game for people who really like games. Uh, it is ages 10 and up. So you need to be a certain age level and ability level to begin to play. Uh, the rule complexity is medium. There's uh, a bit to, to do if you're going to play the full game, but I do like that they provide some variations within the game. You can remove the potion cards if you want it to be a little simpler and if you want to play with younger kids, which I like that they provide that as an option. Uh, how competitive is this game? It varies depending on how many people you're playing with and whether or not you include the potion cards. It's medium if uh, you don't have the potion cards and you're playing with like two people, then you're not getting each other too much. But it can be a high level of competitive um, gameplay if you're playing three players with the potion cards. Those allow you to kind of pick somebody to pick on. And so if two people are picking on the same person, uh, that can make it um, where somebody is not very happy at the end of the game, especially if it's a child playing. So take that into account uh, before you play. But the replay value, I would say is medium to high. It's medium just because since it is a 10 and up game and it's a little more involved, there's a higher entry point to get into the game. But it is also high because if you play the game and you enjoy it, it is such a good game and it is so well done that they can easily become a favorite game that um, your family is going to want to play again and again and again because there's a lot there and it plays just really well. Similar games, if you enjoy this one, are Splendor uh, in that you are collecting different uh, jewel tokens and you're using them to uh, buy cards and uh, it's very popular and I really love Splendor. And then the other one I would say is Happy City where you're um, 
earning an income on cards and um, buying new ones to create a city. Um, this fits in with those other two very well. But of the three, my 10-year-old son says that Mystic Market is his favorite, which is pretty great. So check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.